When I do a guide, I often get a comment in the likes of I do not agree with this guide because I tried Xting differently in the sim and the sim told me it does 20 more DPS. Now, I wish my comments were actually that productive and polite, but regardless, okay, there is a misconception you guys have with simulators, sims, and the, what they are supposed to do, so I will explain to you why sims do not tell the whole story, why they are sometimes flawed, and also, while I'm at it, I guess, why Retail WoW sucks and why Classic WoW is better, even though you know that. First of all, what is a sim, okay? A sim is a model that simulates with very complex mathematical uh, stuff how much DPS you can theoretically do with your rotation, what are the best decisions you can take, what is the best gear that you can get, etc, etc, etc. It helps you decide what is the most optimal way to do things. A model is a mathematical or logical representation of a process. Now, if hearing that makes you want to throw me in a high school locker, that is because model is a scientific concept used by actual normal science. The thing is that we use models as a mathematical equation, for example, in the case of, of The Sims, because the world is way too complex for us to actually perfectly simulate it or measure it or understand it and that's the only way we can grasp what is going on. And that brings us to the problem with sims. Sims are not designed to give you the end-all, be-all answer to your question, whether that be what is the best rotation, what is the best gear, or whatever. Sims were invented about seven years ago to help us understand what happens when you change something. I am gonna take you back to the future, okay? Back to retail! Most of the simulators we know nowadays, like raid bots for example, they were invented back in Battle for Azeroth. Why? Because in Battle for Azeroth, Eon Hasikost has introduced this thing called Azerite gear into the game, and it makes me wonder how the nation of Greece uses shoelaces over velcro. Basically, and I mean basically uh, intentionally because the system is way more complex than this, and that's kind of the point, every piece of gear gained a new effect. Some of them work like a simple talent, like, I don't know, your Frostbolt does 10% more damage, the yada yada yada, something like that. But a lot of them were obscure chains on proc hits, like 3% chance that your Frostbolt is gonna do 5% of your armor in damage, something like that. It made it so changing one little thing in your character would have ramification for all the other 9 effects that you had in your gear, and as such it was basically impossible to know what was the best gear. Back then you could have been wearing blue gear, and you could have found a purple replacement, and you couldn't even know if it was better. And of course Titan Forging made it even worse, but after like 4 years we finally were able to talk on Hasikostas out of that one, and the system was so screwed that people made computer models to calculate how every one of the four team procs would interact with each other and stuff so they could actually know if a blue item with this proc was better than this other item with this other proc. So you can see right there, back in retail it made sense that people needed sims for everything, not because they were the, the absolute best answer, but because they were the only answer. If you had like 14 equations, touching 14 equations, there is no way in hell you can actually uh, do the math for yourself and know. It's kind of ironic how they got rid of most of the stats in the game, there's like 4 stats for every class now, and still uh, they managed to make it so complex that nobody can understand what they do. So the simulators have several thousand lines of code that try to math it out for you, and you have to run the simulation several times because all those procs were random, so you needed to average out the randomness over a thousand runs. And that's the main reason why retail design sucks and why classic design is so much better. If I wanna do bloodthirst, it's just 45% of my attack power. If I get 10% more attack power, I do 10% more damage, period. You can grab the Casio calculator from school and figure out what item is the best on your own. Of course there is nuance and complexities and randomness on it too, uh, but they are a very small part of your character, uh, unless you are a warrior in that case maybe, do you get a point? So anyway, my point is that sims have several flaws that you need to know. Sims are the hypothetical scenario where you are playing your class 100% perfectly and you do not make a mistake once. It is very common that a rotation that is potentially the best, the best one for the game, it is way too complex or way too conditional or has too many variables for a normal human to play properly. 
that is how you come up with this uh, world in where the top raiders are having like a week or a tell them mathematically what is the best ability in the rotation. They got like, a, like an icon that tells them what to cast next. Sims also do not take into account raid mechanics and that makes a huge difference. For example, let's say you have a very bursty AOE ability like, I don't know, Willwind that has a cooldown but it does a lot of damage on a burst. In a straight AoE fight, you are probably gonna lose to the mages because they have consistent AoE damage without a cooldown, but what about when you have to do AoE intermittently? For example, a fighting like Viscos Fallout where the, the adds spawn and you kill them and then you go back to DPSing. In that scenario, whoever has the best burst cooldowns for AoE is gonna do the best, but the logs, the sims cannot tell you that. Same with a fight like Gamura in BFD, you know how he has a face where like he's like super tanky and then he has a face where you take bonus damage? The guy that wins out in that phase is not the guy with the most consistent damage, it is the guy that has the best cooldowns to pop in the extra damage phase. Also, sims are not very good at calculating for intermittent buffs, for example, the more common example I can come up with, a priest with homunculi. As you guys know, it reduces the armor a lot, so it's like a cooldown for the warriors. The sim is gonna ask assume that the priest is gonna do it on cooldown, but in reality there are many valid reasons why a priest would hold it and wait for a certain fight in the fight, maybe because of a mechanic, maybe because the priest feels like it. All those tiny things are gonna move the numbers. Also, what if the guy that gives you the buff and you calculated it in your sim doesn't show up to the raid that day? What if you are missing a priest that raid for the entire raid? You are gonna have to simulate it again. Not to mention guys, and this is probably the biggest problem with sims, is that sims have to be updated perfectly every balance change, even when Blizzard makes sure to not tell us that there's a balance change. Recent example, Jake from 3 made a, a video about how they made weapon skill half as important as it used to be, and they didn't feel like putting it in the patch notes. Nobody knew, he just found out one day. So you can't use the simulator from the previous patch, and on top of that you have to trust that the guy that coded the whole thing, which is very complex, knows every obscure detail on how your class and, and the game works. Look guys, I didn't come here to talk to you about the evils of simming. If you wanna use a sim, uh, by all means do it, it's a great tool. The best use that I see for a sim actually in my opinion is the same reason that people use sims in retail. It is to tell which item is better, because as you guys know, the more you get on one stat, the more another stats become valuable. For example, the more spell crit you get, the more valuable spell power gets, because spell crit, 1% crit is 1% more damage, so the more spell damage is like 1% more valuable. So they are a handy tool for calculating that. I tell you guys in my guides uh, a stat priority because I want to keep it simple and easy to remember, but if you really want to go into the nitty gritty of what makes a best in slot item, uh, instead of just looking for a best in slot list for some reason, a sim is pretty much your best bet. They are a great tool, I wish they existed back in the private server days, because I had a lot of stupid ideas on how the warrior worked back then. All I am saying in this video is that just like an actual scientist would do after they come up with a model, you have to go out there and test it, because a model is never 100% true to reality by design. It is not uncommon if you look at the rank 1 parser streams that they say one day I am gonna try this new thing because this new thing simulated better in the numbers and they just go into the raid and it sucks. Sims are not a useful tool for most of the player base but if you wanna be at the top of the leaderboards, if you wanna be rank 1, uh, that's the insanity that it's gonna take. Subscribe, leave a like, join the discord and thank you for watching.